Hi friends, I'm Madhavta from Easy Approach and it's the 32nd video of Flutter video series. So far we have done different things like we have talked about the UI, we have talked about state management and local database. But yet we haven't talked about how can our application interact with internet and get some data. So in this video we are going to make HTTP requests to get some data from internet and we'll show the data on application screen. So the package that we are going to use for making HTTP request in our Flutter application is this HTTP. So you can find it on pub.dev. And now you just have to go on installation tab. There you'll find the dependency that you must need to add in your pub spec so that you can use it in your application. So just copy it and go in your project directory. You have to go on pubspec.yml file and after Cupertino icon you can just paste it. And now you need to click on this packages get this would install the package in your application and then you can use all the available functions in your application to make http request so let me tell you about the http package a bit so if you go to the readme tab of the http package there you can find a composable future based library for making http requests so it actually provides you a bunch of features to make http requests and secondly the data that we are trying to get from the internet is this data that I have hosted on some web in JSON format. So it's just the dummy data and you can think it like an API that's actually providing you some data. And the data that's actually your API is providing is the JSON object of a student. You can use the same link to make HTTP requests and test the HTTP package. But before making the HTTP request and to get this data from the internet, we first need to make the model class for this object so that we can store it in our application. So let's go in the project directory inside the lib. Let's create a new class file, a student model. And you can see there are only three properties. The first one is name, education, and a skill. So let's make three different fields and all our strings. And now you have to make the constructor to initialize these values. So this is it, we have made the object uh, model for the data that we are trying to get from the internet. So we have made the model class for this data. And now we are good to make the HTTP request. So now let's go in main.dart file and remove all the existing code of the default application so that we can write our own. And now let's make a status widget. You can give any name. And you have to give the reference of your stateless widget here in the home and let's remove this and now before making http requests you first need to import http package so it's http slash http dot dot and you have to give some alias so that you can call it and now we are good to make our future to get the data from the internet so now let's make future for getting the data from internet so you have to write here future and as the future will be returning the student model so you have to give the type of the future so it's a student model and now you can give any name like get student and this is it now you have to import this file as well and now we have to make the http get request so you first have to make a final variable let's give it name response and now you have to use http.get And as you can see, you have to give here the URL from which you are getting the data. So uh, you have to give the URL. So this is the URL that you have to give. I will put it into the detail of the video so that you can also use this. So let's make another variable of URL and just paste this. And this HTTP.get is actually a future. So you have to use here a wait. And since you are using here a wait, you have to make your future async. 
So this is actually the response that you will be getting from your HTTP call. So it would include so many things like header, the body of the response and so many things, but in raw form. So you have to convert this text in JSON object. So you can do it by um, using here. Let's make another variable of a string that would hold the JSON student. And you have to use here JSON D code. And here you need to give response dot body. So it would convert your raw text into the JSON object of a student. And as you can see, the return type of the future that we have made to get data from the internet is a student model, not a string. So there must be some mapping function that would map this JSON object into real student model. So what we do normally, we normally make a function inside the model so that we can map the JSON into a real model object. So now let's make the method to map the JSON object into a student model. So what I'm actually doing, I'm making here a factory method. So if you have already worked on a static method, you can think factory method as a static method. So just write here factory and you have to give the name of your class. And now you have to use dot and now you can give any name like from JSON. And here you'll be getting the JSON. And now you have to return the student model corresponding to the JSON that you have received. So how will get the name of the JSON? So you can get it by JSON and now you have to give the name of the field that you want to get. So this is how you'll get the name. And now as the education field is same in the JSON. So ha you have to give here JSON education and at the last you have to give JSON a skill. So this would map the JSON that we will receive from the HTTP call and it would make it into a student model so that we can use it in our application. So what we have to do, we just have to uh, use here return. And we have a student model dot from JSON. Now you have to give just here JSON a student. So this is it. We have completed the future. So at last we have to show the student model that we will receive by this future in our application. So the best widget for it is future builder as it builds the widget when it receives the data from future. Not just it, it also keeps you updated about the current status of future. So whether it is completed or not, or whether it is in loading state so that you can show the progress bar or something to show the user and to make your application interactive. But before making the future builder, we need to do one thing in future that I've missed actually. After making the HTTP request, we need to check the status code of the request so that we can make sure that the request we have done has been successfully completed because there are some cases when it ends up with some error. So what you have to do, you first have to come here and you have to write your response dot status code and you have to check if it returns you 200. It means it's okay. So if it's okay, you have to get the JSON and then you have to return the student model. And else if it is not okay, you just have to throw some exception. So this is it and now we can make the future builder. At first you need to write here a scaffold widget and inside the scaffold widget, I would have a center widget so that I can align the future builder in the center of the screen. And here you have to give the type of the data that your future will be sending you. So as we are receiving the student model, so you have to give her a student model. So you first need to give here the reference of the future that is get a student. And now you have to define the builder. And here you have two things. The first thing is the context. And the second thing is the snapshot by which you'll get the data. And as I said, you future builder keeps you updated about the current status of the future. So there are basically three status of the future. The first one is complete with data and the second one is complete with error. And the third one, which you can think as a default state is awaiting a state. So now let's make cases for each of the state. So the first one, oh, I have misspelled it. It should be snapshot. And now the first one would be snapshot dot has data. So if it returns you data, it means it's 
successful state now we have to build here something to show the data now there is second case when it ends up with error so you can see it if a snapshot has some error so in this case you have to build something uh, like text widget to show some error and now as the default state is the waiting state you can just return here the circular progress indicator and now inside this we have to show the data that we have received so we can here return the text widget in which we can show the data so let's uh, make some message like name equals to So you can get the data uh, by using a snapshot.data and you can save it in some variable and now we can show it on the screen. So as the data is a student model so you can access the field that's inside the student model so we can access name, skill and education. So let's give here a student.name and let's print something else so we can print the scale as well now let's return some widget in case of error so I'm just uh, returning here a text widget in which I'll show the error if we encounter any so you can get the error by using a snapshot dot error and you have to convert it into a string so now if I refresh it or rerun this application, this should show initially the progress bar and then the data that we are actually trying to get. So you can see the progress bar, but I think it's some error. So if I zoom it a bit, you can see map a string comma dynamic is not a subtype of the string. So we have actually, uh, let me see it in future. Oh yeah, here we have done a silly mistake. Actually, this JSON decode returns you the JSON object in the form of map string comma dynamic. So it actually provides you a map of key and value pair. And we have assigned it into a string. So we have uh, two things that we can do. We can either make it final and uh, let it uh, decide the type itself. And we can also make it a string comma dynamic. But I think we should make it final. And now if I rerun it, so now you can see the data on the screen. So this is it from this video. In this video, we have learned how to do, how to make HTTP requests. And we have got the data from internet and shown on the application. So it's just the basic. And in, in the next video, we'll be working on this HTTP and making some post requests and get requests so frequently. So this is it from this video. If you like the video, please subscribe my channel and share the videos with those who want to learn Flutter with easy approach. So thank you for watching.